Our next speaker will be Elder Thomas Spencer Monson, whom you have just sustained as a member of the Council of Twelve. President McKay, President Brown, President Tanner, my brethren and brothers and sisters, from the depths of humility and with an overwhelming sense of inadequacy, I stand before you and pray earnestly for your prayers in my behalf. Some years ago, I stood at a pulpit and noticed a little sign that only the speaker could see. And the words on that sign were these, Who stands at this pulpit, let him be humble. How I pray to my Heavenly Father that I might never forget the lesson I learned that day. I pledge my life, all that I may have. I will strive to the utmost of my ability to be what you would want me to be. I am grateful for the words of Jesus Christ, our Savior, when he said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. I earnestly pray, my brothers and sisters, that my life might merit this promise from our Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I shall now present to you the names of the general authorities and general officers of the church for your vote. Russell M. Nelson and Dallin H. Oaks. All in favor, please manifest it. With reference to Dallin Oaks, I should like to say that while we nominate and sustain him today, he will not be ordained to the apostleship, nor will he be set apart as a member of the Council of the Twelve, nor will he begin his apostolic service until he completes his present judicial commitments, which may require several weeks. He is absent from the city and necessarily absent from the conference. We excuse him. Saturday of April Conference of 84 has been circled on our calendar for many years. For that date was targeted as the first time in my life that our only son would be old enough to attend general priesthood meeting with me. Last night that long-awaited goal became a reality. Brothers and sisters, little did we know that on that day my name would be presented as a member of the Quorum of the Twelve. As we didn't know, our children didn't know either. Our married daughters telephoned us between sessions. One, who was expecting a baby, said, Daddy, I was so shocked by that announcement, I think I'm going into labor. <laughs> that she did. So, President Hinckley, your announcement from the First Presidency should get credit for at least an assist. <laughs> Our 22nd grandchild arrived safely last evening. A wide array of feelings has flashed through my mind since I heard the call that will change my life. 
The first feeling is that of personal inadequacy. That feeling is intensified as I think of the incomparable power of elders Legrand Richards and Mark E. Peterson, whose absence we keenly sense. They were to me dear friends, as well as esteemed leaders. Then, as I look about and see the strength of those more qualified and able than I, I truly am humbled by this calling. Feelings of commitment well up from the depths of my soul. My sweetheart Dancel and I first made those covenants in the temple of the Lord over 38 years ago to consecrate our lives to the service of the Lord. Today I reaffirm that promise to give all I have to the building of the kingdom of God on the earth. In accepting this call, knowing that challenges, charges, and keys will be conferred, and that buffetings will likewise come, I commit my effort, energy, and my all. My dear brothers and sisters, because it was not appropriate for me to commence my church service until I had concluded my judicial duties in state government, I did not speak at the April conference where I was sustained. Consequently, this semi-annual conference is my first opportunity to speak to the general membership of the church to express acceptance of my calling to the Council of the Twelve. I am thrilled with this calling. Having been called of God by prophecy and by the laying on of hands by those in authority, I have gladly forsaken my professional activities to spend the rest of my days in the service of the Lord. I will devote my whole heart, might, mind, and strength to the great trust placed in me especially to the responsibilities of a special witness of the name of Jesus Christ in all the world. It is proposed that we sustain as president of the Council of the Twelve Apostles, Elder Ezra Taft Benson, and the following as members of that council. Ezra Taft Benson, Howard W. Hunter, Thomas S. Monson, Boyd K. Packer, Marvin J. Ashton, L. Tom Perry, David B. Haight, James E. Faust, Neil A. Maxwell, Russell M. Nelson, Dallin H. Oaks, and M. Russell Ballard. It is proposed that we sustain the counselors in the First Presidency and the Twelve Apostles as prophets, seers, and revelators. All in favor, please manifest it. I think we'll ask the brethren to remain where they are rather than have the confusion of a lot of people shifting places. They know where they belong and you know where they belong. Thank you. My brothers and sisters, I'm deeply humbled that the confidence of the Lord and my brethren and would pledge to you that I will do the very best I know how. The past nine and a half years as I have been sent on errands for the Lord throughout the earth have caused me, I believe, perhaps more than anyone else in this congregation to know that this church is filled with righteous, good, dedicated men. Each of us obediently learn that we will come forth as we are called to try to do the very best we can in our callings, whether it be home teacher, whether it be stake president, or whether it be general authority. Now, my brothers and sisters, I would ask for an interest in your faith and prayers. I express my affection to my wife, my children, 
who sustain me in whatever the Lord might ask me to do. I am grateful for this abundant blessing and pray humbly that I might serve you, the membership of this church, in a way that would be pleasing and acceptable unto our Heavenly Father and ask this prayer humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, I shall now present to you the general authorities and general auxiliary presidencies of the church for your sustaining vote. We pay tribute to Elder Marvin J. Ashton, member of the Council of the Twelve who passed away February 25th, 1994. It is proposed that we sustain Howard W. Hunter as president of the Council of the Twelve Apostles and the following as members of that council. Howard W. Hunter, Boyd K. Packer, L. Tom Perry, David B. Haight, James E. Faust, Neil A. Maxwell, Russell M. Nelson, Dallin H. Oaks, M. Russell Ballard, Joseph B. Worthland, Richard G. Scott, and Robert D. Hales. Those in favor, please manifest it. We now invite the newly sustained member of the Twelve, members of the Seventy, and presiding bishop to take their places on the stand. If you brethren would now come forward, if you're able. <laughs> it is time for my response. Nineteen years ago, after being set apart by the Quorum of the Twelve in the Temple as an assistant to the Twelve Apostles, Elder Legrand Richards gave me two pieces of advice that have come to me over and over in the past fifty-some-odd hours that I've known of this call. First was, oh, to be a boy and have your whole life ahead of you. I was 42 years of age. <laughs> I am now 61 and am once again a boy. There are men sitting on this stand who have been apostles and in the First Presidency for half my age. The second thing Elder Legrand Richard said to me was, you know, in my life, it was like a great oak tree. I would grow a great oak tree. And he said, I did it in business. And the oak tree shook. And an acorn came down, and they sent me out as a mission president. And then I grew another oak tree. And they sent me out a second time as a mission president, and then a third. And then he talked of being a presiding bishop, and each time the oak tree would shake, an acorn would be planted. At this time, I understand the oak, the oak tree has shaken, an acorn has planted, a new beginning. I express gratitude, my brothers and sisters, for the strength which comes through your faith and prayers. I am in need of your prayers at this time of my calling. To be an apostle of the Lord, I am finding, is a process, a process of repentance and humility to look inward as we've been instructed and ask for forgiveness and strength to be what I should be. Unfortunately, I'm not a perfect man and infallibility does not come with the call. Therefore, I must ask for forgiveness from Heavenly Father for those things which I have done which are less than perfect and ask forgiveness of anyone I might have offended knowingly or unknowingly. because of my personality or style.
the strength which will come through your prayers will be invaluable to what I need to do to forge the spiritual strength required to have my voice and my testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ penetrate the hearts of those who will hear. The oak tree is shaken, the acorn is planted, and this is Easter, commemoration of the Savior coming forth after three days as the resurrected risen Lord. For the rest of my sojourn here in mortality, I will have the opportunity to bear testimony as a special witness of our Savior Jesus Christ. It is proposed that we sustain as members of the Council of the Twelve Apostles Boyd K. Packer, L. Tom Perry, David B. Haight, James E. Faust, Neil A. Maxwell, Russell M. Nelson, Dallin H. Oaks, M. Russell Ballard, Joseph B. Worthlin, Richard G. Scott, Robert D. Hales, and Jeffrey R. Holland. Those in favor, please manifest it. My beloved brothers and sisters, this is obviously my first opportunity to stand before you. Since the events of June 23rd, altered the course of my life and my service forever. That was exactly 100 days ago, and every one of those days I have prayed to be worthy of and equal to this sacred responsibility. Perhaps you can understand the immense personal inadequacy I feel and the deep, often painful examination of my soul I have experienced. Obviously, my greatest thrill and the most joyful of all realizations is that I have the opportunity, as Nephi phrased it, to talk of Christ, rejoice in Christ, preach of Christ, and prophesy of Christ. Wherever I may be and with whomever I may find myself until the last breath of my life is gone, surely there could be no higher purpose or greater privilege than that of special witness of the name of Christ in all the world. But my greatest anxiety stems from that very same commission. A line of scripture reminds us with searing understatement that they which preach the gospel should live the gospel. Beyond my words and my teachings and spoken witness, my life must be part of that testimony of Jesus. My very being should reflect the divinity of this work. I could not bear it if anything I might ever say or do would in any way diminish your faith in Christ, your love for this church, or the esteem in which you hold the Holy Apostleship. I do promise you, as I have promised the Lord and these my brethren, that I will strive to live worthily of this trust and I will serve to the full measure of my ability. I know I cannot succeed without the guidance of the Master whose work this is. On occasion, the beauty of His life and the magnitude of His gift comes to my heart with such force that as a favorite hymn says, I scarce can take it in. The purity of His life, His mercy and compassion for us have led me again and again to bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art. It is proposed that the First Presidency sustain as members of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles Boyd K. Packer, L. Tom Perry, David B. Haight, Neil A. Maxwell, Russell M. Nelson, Dallin H. Oaks, M. Russell Ballard, Joseph B. Worthlin, Richard G. Scott, Robert D. Hales, Jeffrey R. Holland, and Henry B. Eyring. Those in favor, please manifest it. We invite Elder Eyring to now take his place with the Council of the Twelve.
Many years ago, I went on assignment to Brazil. As part of the trip, I was to travel by car from Sao Paulo to a conference in a city about two hours distant. A member of the Quorum of the Twelve was going to preside at that conference. I hoped to ride in the car with him so that I might learn. But he suggested that I make the trip in another car with missionaries. He said, teach them while you travel. So when I climbed into the front seat of the car, I learned that two young lady missionaries, companions, were going to that city for a transfer. After we had become acquainted, I leaned back over the seat and asked, what would you like to know about? Both of them eagerly and almost in chorus said, tell us how we can become more humble. You might have struggled with that as I did. I, I only remember the green hills of Brazil going by as I tried and the feeling at the end that I had failed. If only I could have that chance again on this beautiful day. I have learned some things about their question since President Hinckley invited me to meet with him yesterday afternoon and issued the call to this sacred office. I think I could help them. A little more now. I will keep my covenant to take his name upon me and always remember him. And I will go wherever I am sent to teach of him and offer the ordinances by which we take his name upon us and promise that we will always remember him and keep his commandments. And if they accept that invitation, they will know what I know. God our Father lives. His Son, Jesus the Christ, did the will of the Father and atoned for all of our sins. Because of him, we will be resurrected. Because of his atonement, we may be exalted. The Lord sent heavenly messengers to confer keys on his prophet, Joseph Smith. The Lord has called his prophet today, Gordon B. Hinckley. The Savior will speak to us and all the world through him. And if those who hear will take the Savior's name upon them and always remember him and keep his commandments, they will finally come to him and he will take them home to his Father and our Father, where we may live forever in families. I testify that is true in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. It is proposed that we sustain Thomas Spencer Monson as president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, Boyd Kenneth Packer as acting president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, and the following as members of that quorum, Boyd K. Packer, L. Tom Perry, Russell M. Nelson, Dallin H. Oaks, M. Russell Ballard, Joseph B. Worthlin, Richard G. Scott, Robert D. Hales, Jeffrey R. Holland, Henry B. Eyring, Dieter Friedrich Uchtdorf, and David Allen Bednar. Those in favor, please manifest it. My dear brothers and sisters here in Salt Lake City and around the world, it is good to be with you. I ex extend my love and my greetings to Elder Bednar and to Elder Robert Oaks and their new colleagues. To describe my inner feelings, I would say I'm calm as a hurricane, or even better, I'm happy and frightened. In one sentence, I need your prayers. I need the Lord. Having received a call and being given a sacred trust that will completely influence my life forever, my feelings are tender and emotions often close to tears. I have a great sense of inadequacy and I feel a sweet agony of a deep and often painful examination of my soul during the many hours which have passed day or night since Friday morning this week. 
My life was eternally blessed by one choice member who reached out more than 50 years ago. Some days after World War II, my grandmother was standing in line for food when an elderly single sister with no family of her own invited her to a sacrament meeting in Zwickau, East Germany. My grandmother and my parents accepted the invitation. They went to church, felt the spirit, were uplifted by the kindness of the members and edified by the hymns of the Restoration. My grandmother, my parents, and my three siblings all were baptized. I had to wait two years because I was only six. How grateful I am for a spiritual, sensitive grandmother, teachable parents, and a wise, white-haired, elderly, single sister who had the sweet boldness to reach out and following the Savior's example by inviting us to come and see. Her name was Sister Evik, which translates in English to Sister Eternal. I will be eternally grateful for her love and example. With these tender feelings of gratitude for all who have influenced my life in past years, I commit myself to the future. My heart and mind is filled with joy that for the rest of my life I will have the opportunity to talk of Christ, rejoice in Christ, preach of Christ, and prophesy of Christ. All this as a special witness of our Savior, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, my heart is filled to overflowing. My mind is spinning. My knees are weak and wobbly. And I find that words are totally inadequate to communicate effectively the feelings and thoughts I desire to share with you. I pray for and invite the companionship of the Holy Ghost for me and for you as I speak with you briefly this Sabbath morning. In the hours since President Hinckley extended this new call to serve, I have heeded the admonition of Nephi to liken all scriptures unto us with a greater sense of purpose and intensity than I have ever done before. I have reflected on the teaching of Paul that God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. This morning I take great comfort in knowing that I am one of the truly weak things of the world. My dear brothers and sisters, I am grateful for you. As I see you assembled here in the conference center and envision you in meeting houses all over the earth, I am blessed by your faithfulness and devotion to the Savior. As your arms were raised to the square on Saturday, I felt a sustaining influence flow into my soul that was most remarkable. Few of you know who I am, yet you know from whom the call has come, and you are so willing to sustain and support. I express my thanks to you and pledge my whole soul and all of my energy to this sacred work. I will go where the Lord and the leaders of His Church want me to go. I will do what they want me to do. I will teach what they want me to teach, and I will strive to become what I should and must become. In the strength of the Lord and through His grace, I know that you and I can be blessed to accomplish all things. As one of the weakest of the weak, I testify that God lives. I testify and witness that Jesus is the Christ. He is our Redeemer and our Savior, and He lives. It is proposed that we sustain Thomas Spencer Monson as president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, Boyd Kenneth Packer as acting president of the Quorum of the Twelve, and the following members of that quorum. 
Boyd K. Packer, L. Tom Perry, Russell M. Nelson, Dallin H. Oaks, M. Russell Ballard, Joseph B. Worthlett, Richard G. Scott, Robert D. Hales, Jeffrey R. Holland, Dieter F. Uchtdorf, David A. Bednar, and Quentin L. Cook. Those in favor, please manifest. Dear brothers and sisters, I join with you in expressing my love and sustaining support to President Eyring and his family. President Hinckley extended this call to serve in the Quorum of the Twelve late Thursday afternoon. I cannot possibly articulate the kaleidoscope of feelings I have experienced since then. There have been sleepless nights and much prayer. My spirits have been buoyed, however, by the knowledge that President Hinckley is the prophet and that the membership of the church will be praying for me and my family. To say that I feel deeply inadequate would be an understatement. When I was called as a general authority in April of 1996, I also felt unequal to that calling. Elder Maxwell reassured me then that the most important qualification for all of us serving in the kingdom is to be comfortable in bearing witness of the divinity of the Savior. A peace came over me at that time and has stayed with me since because I love the Savior and have had spiritual experiences that allow me to testify of Him. I rejoice in the opportunity to bear witness of Jesus Christ in all the world, notwithstanding my inadequacies. It is proposed that the First Presidency sustain as members of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles Boyd K. Packer, L. Tom Perry, Russell M. Nelson, Dallin H. Oaks, M. Russell Ballard, Joseph B. Worthlin, Richard G. Scott, Robert D. Hales, Jeffrey R. Holland, David A. Bednar, Quinton L. Cook, and D. Todd Christofferson. Those in favor, please manifest it. It is proposed that the First Presidency sustain the counselors in the First Presidency and the Twelve Apostles as prophets, seers, and revelators. We invite Elder Christofferson to t now take his place within the Quorum of the Twelve. Fifteen years ago, I stood for the first time at the pulpit in the tabernacle as a newly sustained seventy. I was forty-eight years old. I had thick, dark brown hair. <laughs> I thought I understood what it meant to feel inadequate. At the end of my five-minute remarks, my shirt was dripping with perspiration. The whole thing was something of an ordeal. However, today, in retrospect, it seems a comparatively pleasant experience. <laughs> when President Dieter F. Uchtdorf and Elder David A. Bednar were first sustained as members of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, a witness of the divine origin of their calls came to me during the session. I was also given in that moment an understanding of the surpassing sacredness of the call and service of an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. I do not have the words to express that understanding because it was communicated spirit to spirit without words. To think of it now reduces me to a depth of humility I have never before experienced. And I plead with my Heavenly Father to sustain me as He ever has, that I might measure up to something that is far beyond my native capacity and be able to focus outwardly losing myself in your service. I trust in Him, and I know that His grace is sufficient. 
And so I here unreservedly commit all that I have and am to God and His beloved Son. I also commit myself, my loyalty, my service, and my love to the First Presidency and to my brethren of the Twelve. It is proposed that we sustain Boyd Kenneth Packer as President of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles and the following as members of that Quorum. Boyd K. Packer, L. Tom Perry, Russell M. Nelson, Dallin H. Oaks, M. Russell Ballard, Richard G. Scott, Robert D. Hales, Jeffrey R. Holland, David A. Bednar, Quinton L. Cook, D. Todd Christofferson, and Neil L. Anderson. Those in favor, please manifest it. My dear brothers and sisters across the world, my knees are weak and my emotions close to the surface. I express my love for you and profoundly thank you for your sustaining vote. In so many dimensions, I feel inadequate and humbled. I take solace that in one qualification for the Holy Apostleship, where there can be no latitude extended, the Lord has deeply blessed me. I do know with perfect and certain clarity through the power of the Holy Ghost that Jesus is the Christ, the beloved Son of God. There is no man with more love than President Thomas S. Monson. His warmth is as the sunshine of midday. Yet as he extended to me this sacred call, you can imagine the overwhelming soberness I felt as the eyes of the prophet of God peered deeply into the chambers of my soul. Happily, you can also imagine the love I felt from the Lord and from his prophet as President Monson wrapped his long and loving arms around me. I love you, President Monson. To those who know me, if ever I have been less than I should have been in your presence, I ask for your forgiveness and patience. I so very much need your faith and prayers in my behalf. I know that I am not what I must become. I pray that I might be willing and moldable to the Lord's tutoring and correction. I take comfort from the words of President Monson last night in the priesthood session that the Lord will shape the back to fit the burden placed upon it. I pray that my spirit might be like that of Elder Joseph B. Worthlin, whose passing brought about this call, a spirit void of any desire for personal attention, willing to go anywhere and do anything the Lord's prophets would have me do, applying my full consecration in testifying of the Savior and building the kingdom of God until my final breath. <laughs> 